Julius H. On runs to remember and to forget. A life with more twists than turns on the track. A life that began in northern Uganda in the village of Awake, where for 21 years the people were afraid to sleep. But when I go home, you are worried like the wall maybe could come at night and wake you up. And then you have to run in the bush. One night, the war did come, and Julius was kidnapped, forced to be a child soldier. By this man, made famous in the video seen by tens of millions, Coney 2012. Turning the girls into sex slaves, and the boys into child soldiers. And he forces them to kill their own parents. Joseph Coney's rebel army, the LRA, took Julius and 14 other boys from their village. I never thought I would get out because each time anybody tried to escape or sneak, they would kill you. When Julius refused to kill, he was caned. And very many kids just died because they were caned, not they don't want to kill. Government planes came to fight the rebels and Julius and the others saw their chance to run. Nine of my friends, they were just shot dead. And we are all crawling like a monkey on the ground. And then six of us made it home. Julius kept running. Yeah. From his past into his unlikely future. A seemingly impossible stretch for a boy with no shoes, no money to pay the fees at elementary school. But Julius heard if he ran in track and won, he might get a scholarship. So he ran without shoes. 42 miles to a race to represent his county. I just found myself winning three events, and that's what changed everything. And I won the three races without shoes. Then, at the Junior World Championships, he got the attention of American coaches. He was recruited to run for George Mason University. Julius left his family and came to the U.S eventually setting the NCAA track record for the 800 meters, a record that still stands today 16 years later. He was chosen to represent Uganda at the Olympics as its team captain in both 1996 and 2000. Even though I did not win Olympic gold medal, I think God had prepared me to win I had a gold medal in the humanitarian. <laughs> Around yet another curve, while out on a run near his hometown in Uganda, he made a discovery that would begin his training for a new role. Eleven children lying under a bus. They asked him for money. I told them, I said, I do not have money. Where are your parents? Then they said, they're all dead. I said, can I walk you to my home? My dad saw me coming with these children. <laughs> he stood up from his chair. And I told him, I said, I found these kids. His father took them in. Julius promised to send money when he got back to the U.S. And that started another race. To win a better life for the children of Uganda. This is where we first met five and a half years ago. Over dinner, Julius yeah. met Jim yeah, Fee. I've been interested in running my for years and years. Decades. About to retire as a Portland executive in the medical device industry. Julius started telling the story. And I'm just thinking, wow. You know, this is remarkable. There's, there's child soldiers, there's Olympians, and there's humanitarians. But I'm not sure you're going to find all three of them, you know, in one package. When we go to Uganda, we fly And that's when Jim knew what he'd be oh, doing in retirement. And here it is. Helping Julius build the H. On Uganda Children's Fund. And realize that he has virtually nothing, and yet he's you know, helping these 11 kids, um, you know, then it was pretty easy for me to get on board. Five trips to Uganda and countless talks and fundraisers later, the original 11 orphans they yeah, support. So these are the kids you found under the bus. Yeah. Now number 37. This is the clinic which we are building. And the charity has built the first ever medical clinic in Julius's village of Awake. Amid huts, it's the only building of its kind for 42 miles. The Christina Clinic is named in memory of his mother. 
shot by Coney's rebels and unable to get medical care, she slowly bled to death over four days. If there was a medical clinic, my mother would have not died. After his mother's death, he was so grief-stricken, he couldn't sleep or run. He dropped off the 2004 Olympic team and left college a year short of his degree. All losses that still haunt. <coughs> he lives in Beaverton now. Hello. Near Nike with his wife Grace, also from Uganda, and their one-year-old son Jaden. Make my tea, you know. Living modestly. You know, I brought the tea from Africa. Eating only one meal a day. Got bread, got peanut butter, got honey. Then I'm ready to go. Almost. It's a way to remember his to life in Uganda, and so he can send what money's left home. He works part time in the Nike employee store. Back home where they stock them. So Stocking them hundreds the of what he They're once all... never had shoes. Those were being slaughtered. Or he killed them and then. And keeps this newspaper article about Coney's massacre of his people yeah. close. Yeah. And then he would cook them in a pot. You see the pot? He'll show his son one day that even with new beginnings, they should never forget where they come from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From Uganda to the United States. Yeah, I know. Miles and years later. Yeah, I'm ready. It's like being fit in a race, you know. How proud his mother would be of her boy who couldn't afford school. A boy nearly lost to the LRA. This May, leading the procession of graduates getting their degrees from the University of Phoenix in Portland. I feel so proud today to be Her boy, Julius, like chosen to give the commencement address. A dream of running to be a gold medalist, but I'm bringing change in my village. He becomes the first person Julius in his village Ashton. to graduate from college. Congratulations, Julius. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. For Julius, the run never ends. After the Christina Medical Clinic, he wants to bring his village of Awake an ambulance and a new school and sports. A fun run sponsored by Nike attracted 6,000 kids. None of them had shoes except me. <laughs> For something more priceless than an Olympic medal. You never know, maybe one of them could be like me. It's in my heart, it's like a song. I really need to keep doing something good. For his son, for the people of Uganda, an awakening and a golden future. I want people to see what one humble person can make a difference or can change the world.